Have you ever pulled a piece of wood through a machine? I hope you didn't need those last few inches. You see, it'd be better if you pushed it through. Pushing it keeps it pushed against the table and fence, whereas pulling, well, doesn't push it against anything. Pushing comes with its own set of problems, though. What we need is a longer table. I was sold on extension tables the very first time I saw them used. I was watching a promotional video for a 5-in-1 combination unit. In the video, the demonstrator used extension tables for various functions on the machine. Well, sadly, I couldn't afford to buy a combination unit, but I immediately bought two extension tables. I got these from a German company. This table is $232 and it's made of cast iron. This one is $490 and it's made of aluminum. It also has an adjustable foot. Mounting rails for these tables are $100 and they come in four metric sizes. When I bought these tables, their website was broken and I had to call them directly. There is one other table on the market that I know about, made by another German company. It appears from the price in the pictures that they are roughly the same. In all, I spent over $800 on these tables here, but I've had them for over a year and didn't install them until this video. The problem with the cast iron table is, it's heavy. I wanted to mount it on my shaper, but I quickly realized that my shaper table was not strong enough for this. In fact, it's too heavy for most of my machines. What I didn't know is that the machines that these tables are made for have extra strength cast into the top where you would mount them. Aluminum is lighter and this table has a foot, so you'd think that would solve the weight problem. But being much longer and thicker, it's actually heavier. If the foot ever got loose or somebody accidentally kicked it, I'd need a new shaper. Though the point is moot, since it turns out the bracket is too tall to be mounted on such a short skirt. I still needed extension tables, and these weren't going to work, so I made my own. This is our first prototype. It's working so well that I'm still using it. I made it long on purpose to see if it would be too weak. It ended up being too heavy, and the adjustments didn't work. After a couple more prototypes, we came up with the final design. And here it is. I've got it installed here on the square bench. Space is always at a premium, no matter how big your shop is. Having the rail mounted on the bench takes up very little space, and when you need an extra hand, you just pop the extension table on, and you've got the extra support of a bigger bench without having to walk around it all the time. It's also light, since the table is made of hickory. We chose hickory for its strength, lightweight, and hardness. In a minute, I'll show you how I installed two of these brackets on the shaper, but first, the planer. Most planers have a very small feed table. The roller only pushes down so hard, and a long piece has so much leverage it can overpower the feed roller springs. There's only about 9 inches from the outfeed roller to the edge of this table, so the edge acts as a fulcrum and the wood like a powerful lever. Without an extension table, there's so little to reference off of that it's difficult to hold the board consistently level. You have so much leverage against the feed roller that any inconsistency in feeding can overpower it. This is how snipe like this happens. With an extension table, there's so much to reference off of it's like the board snaps into level. The edge of the extension table becomes the fulcrum, which gives the feed roller more leverage. I measured the forces on an 8 foot long 1x3 board. With a 24 inch extension table, the feed roller would need 1 tenth the force to hold the board down. This extra support from an extension table allows the spring to hold a much heavier board down. That means you're much more likely to get a clean cut with no snipe. Now let's look at the jointer. The shorter a jointer is, the harder it is to flatten a long board. A board longer than the in-feed or out-feed table may dip below the table on either side. This really can't be solved with a roller. A board significantly longer than the jointer can fall past the outfeed, causing the last few inches to lift as you saw earlier. An extension table on the outfeed makes a big difference. Not only is it easier to hold the wood down as you push it through, it also provides more support for longer boards. An infeed table would be very helpful as well, but there's a bar in the way. After this Kickstarter is funded, we will expand into jointer, table saw, and bandsaw infeeds and outfeeds. We have multiple sources for all our parts. We have already ordered a small batch of the machine parts from the machine shop and verify the design, the quality, and the CAD file specifications. However, if things go really well and we have to buy many more parts than we planned, there could be delays. In order to mitigate a possibly very long delay, we plan to order the small parts first and then have the larger parts made. This means things will for sure take a little bit longer, but in the event of a supply problem, we can alter the design to use a slightly different part and possibly avoid a very long delay. If this Kickstarter is successful, we will also set up a section on our website where you can order extension tables and mounting brackets in various lengths, as well as replacement parts. So if you'd like to see these tables in production, please support this Kickstarter. For pre-order, we have several options, including a full 24-inch extension table set and a full bracket set without the wood for you to make your own custom wood for your table. Now I'll show you how I installed these brackets. This is the most complicated type of install. We're mounting it to cast iron with a miter slot. I'll be using hand tools to put the miter slot into it. The first step is to figure out where you want the table. If we mount it behind the miter slot, we won't have to cut a miter slot into it. In this case, there's a ribbon to cast iron blocking us. So we'll mount it flush with the front. 
Mounting it further forward also leaves less bracket behind the cutter, which is rarely needed. Clamp the bracket to the table. I suggest using double-sided tape to prevent it from slipping as you clamp it. Use a 5 16th inch drill bit to mark the center of the holes. Mark the miter slot as well on both sides. Unclamp the bracket and remove it from the table. This may require some effort. Drill the holes out with a quarter inch drill. While the bracket is off the machine, we'll rough in the miter slot. Don't do that. Use light pressure to start a curve. Starting light will prevent the blade from skipping and scratching up your beautiful bracket. I put masking tape over the hook. It doesn't protect it much, but it helped me pay attention. Use a new hacksaw blade, trust me. Clamp the bracket to the table again. Don't cover the holes with the clamps. Use the holes to guide your final 5 16 inch drill bit. Put a bolt on after drilling each hole. Once you've drilled the last one, remove the tape. Bolt it back onto the machine. Now we can finish our miter slot. I decided to use the hacksaw and file method to prove it could be done. But with a fresh hacksaw blade and a good quality file, it's much faster than I thought. It took about 5 minutes of sawing and 10 minutes of filing to do each miter. And with a file, you know the slot will end up exactly where you want it. Though it can be done with a dado stack or a router bit, I recommend using this process. Thanks for watching.